but with book 13, um, you've had a few books now in this series. How different is Jane Yellowrock now from when she started out in the first book? Jane started out as sort of a paranormal biker chick meets Lee Child's Jack Reacher. She didn't really have a place that she called home. She had a cheapo apartment she could drop into. She had very few friends. She pretty much lived on the road chasing down bad guys. Her business card said, have stakes will travel. For those of you who remember the old TV show, because you've got to be really old to remember that old TV show. I think it was called Paladin. Um, but anyway, she was this, this socially insecure, awkward woman who, when she was five years old, she accidentally did black magic and absorbed the soul of a mountain lion. So the mountain lion soul and her soul share their shape-shifting headspace. Coming to terms with that character, with her, that cat, uh, is a part of what helps Jane to grow through the entire series. She develops, she hates it because she doesn't have complete control. Beast hates her because Beast wants complete control. They've been fighting each other for a very, very long time. And as the series progresses, part of the character development is that Jane learns to accept and appreciate and deal with her cat, her beast, on all on one level, all in, all in a, in an acceptance level. But she also knows that Beast keeps secrets, and that is another thing that causes conflict all through the book. You've got these two characters inside, so you've got internal conflict, then you've got the external conflict that Jane, who kills uh, insane vampires who are killing humans, that's what she does, she tracks them and kills them. By the time we're in book 14, she has not only been working for the vampires to keep peace in the vampire community because that keeps her friends, the witches, and humans safe, but she also has found a position of power among them. She goes from hating them to working with her worst enemy.